this layer has been sanded and sprayed and I've built a wall around it. Now I'm going to use the same colours that I did in the last smaller version of this landscape um, and here they all are. These are pigments, these are our lang language artist colours, pigments, so yellow, red amber, terrawassa and I'm using Solid Solutions pigment white and the black and also I'm using some silver, silver pigment and metallic effects uh, pigment as well and a gold, a gold pigment. So they're the only things that I'm losing in this, this layer and I'm using acetone to mix with the pigments and I'm going to put them in these little tiny cups here and I have little, some little lids on them and I'm going to mix them with acetone so that they will mix easily into the resin. I'm going to use Mastercast resin because I need thicker resin this time and I want it means that I will have to work very quickly though because it actually thickens a lot quicker than our resin. Okay, I've just mixed up a big load of, of resin and I'm just doing this in as I need it, I'm mixing the colour. So I've just used the white, white solid solutions, um, white pigment paste and I'm just going to do it as I need it. I'm not sure how much I need. So I'm going to paint with this. Now I've mixed up, mixed all my colour into resin. I'm sort of got a hurry because some of this resin is harder than others. And now I'm going to do a dirty pour. So I'm going to use, start with my white, which is starting to go off. My white resin, you can feel it's getting warm. Then I'm going to go this colour. This one. This one. Some more white. Some more silver. Sorry, gold. Silver. Some more white. Yellow ochre. Bit of black. Oh, the cat's getting hot. The black. Some yellow ochre. Some white. It's getting hot. Okay. So I'm going to tip this.
Well, he's not cheap. It's a nice little shimmers in there as well. It's, it's, it does look like a sort of an icy, snowy landscape. Some interesting stuff in there. It's not easy to do this. This big. It's not really easy, but it's not, it's actually harder. So, it actually looks quite good though. There's a sort of, definitely a rugged mountain range look about it, which is good. Okay. This is all starting to cure. Okay. Yeah, Just added the resin glass to lots and lots of dots of it, a lot of cells. Really worked this time. It's an interesting effect. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I'm just interested to see what happens. Because it's pretty hard. The resin is, is cured, curing very quickly, so this was the right time to put it on was after it had cured for a while, because it's it's going to move less. I'm hoping. <laughs> yes, anyway, we'll find out. Anyway, that was a lot of fun doing that. Okay, I've wiped the surface really well with acetone, just so that I don't have any of the resin glass, because I'm going to cut into this and cut a circular shape for the sun, hopefully, with white. So here I go. I'm just doing a little bit of more of some bit of hand work. So I just mixed up a little bit of clear resin. Not too much.
I just put a little bit of um, gold, gold pigment, pure gold pigment. It just it's just floating on top. She has to give a little glitz, little glitter. Just using, I'm using the same colours that are in the resin. So these are um, these are actually the pigment, the same pigment colours I use in the resin. I've mixed up into containers, and I'm using them. I mixed I mixed these with. Uh, I used a I used I mixed these colours up with the uh, Liquitex. There's a little bit of Liquitex in them, and I used Golden 100, Golden 100, and a bit of Liquitex. So I mixed these up using the pure pigment. So they're actually pure, pure acrylic paints, which means that they are. Very pure colours and they're, they're light, they're light um, fast because they're art and they're artist quality, so they're good quality paint. So now I'm going to do the same thing as I had here. Is I'm going to pull this, these edges out so you see the see the butterfly. If it resists a bit, it's because the paint's a bit thin. Sometimes putting a bit of white fixes that. That's one wing, and then that's the butterfly I did yesterday. You can see. Just fine brushwork, fine feathering, and then defining it by either darkening or lightening some of the the area around it. So I'm trying to, you know, choose a a light source which way the light is hitting the butterfly wings. So creating an illusion of, of of depth. The same I'm doing the same thing with that one as well. So it's just it's just very it's just fiddly handwork. It's quite relaxing. Okay, I've quite, done quite a bit of um, handwork on it. Now I'm, I'm starting to look. I'm starting to look at the composition and how well it's coming together. And I feel that I have got too busy down here. So this is a little trick that I use just to see what something will look like without. There's a there's a complex part here which um, pulls you off the edge of the page there. And it just adds a bit more, too much detail there. And I was wondering whether I might take that out. And there's also too much happening in this spot here. Too much complexity and detail. And I thought that I might be able to get away with getting rid of that orange pool that I've got there. So I think that there was too, meant too much over this side. So I'm going to get 
I'm going to use some white resin and I'm going to get rid of those parts there. And I think it looks better without them. Okay, here I'm I'm just working into the the mountain type shapes that are in the distance. So I'm I'm just actually using what's already there and deepening the tones and adding a little bit of the orange so that it the the orange colour spreads across the work so there's it creates harmony. I always like to put colours that are in the work in other areas just to create a sense of harmony and to link link your eye from one area to another. Okay, I'm just doing this little butterfly up here in the corner which I just can't get the right effects with so I'm just going to redo it. So I've just made up a bit of white resin. And I'm just going to pull it. Just a little bit. There's a little butterfly that I did. I'm going to work on that, do hand work like I did the other one. So that was a better base. The other one, there wasn't enough interest in the shape of it, so I've needed to do something else. Anyway, that'll, I'll turn that into a butterfly. Okay, I've finished all my hand work. Now I'm doing the final layer of clear resin. I've mixed up a very large batch of, um, this is art resin and it's, it's beautiful and clear for my final cloak. And I've mixed up 800 mils, so there's a lot here. Because I've got, I've got quite a few levels, different levels on the surface here, so I need to fill up all those levels uh, as well as create a level um, final surface. So it's got a fill as well as level, so I need a lot. So I've built a wall with tape, and now I'm going to pour the resin. I mixed it really well. Okay, I've left the resin and let it cure for an hour, actually probably over an hour, because today it's not super hot and I want it to get really tacky. Um, every now and then a little sort of dip would appear. Actually I can just see one there now. So if, if I see a, a small dimple appearing as it's drying and curing, I'll get the blowtorch and I'll just give it a little light blow over the area that's, that's pitting and it'll, it'll pop back out again mostly. <laughs> okay so now what I'm going to do is take the tape, the tape, I've got a little piece of tag there on the corner and I'm just going to pull that off and let the resin go resin down. Now to make sure that I don't get any Pits, I stay with the resin while it's curing. You know, I sort of check on it every now and then to make sure that there's no pits and to make sure the edges are covered. 
So I've just had to do a few little touches up. So I'll just get a tiny bit of resin, I'll just drag it on along the edge where it, it seems to be pulling away. And then I'll just apply a little bit of heat. And then it's it comes back again and, and smooths over. And you can't see where I've added a bit of resin. So it's um, it's essential for a piece this with so much varying levels in it that you need to stay with it. You get a little bit of, of a drip effect on the side, but that doesn't worry me. I mean, I'll sand off those bits off the bottom, but um, that's that's covered quite nicely. There's a real nice thick cover of, of resin. So it's very, very shiny. So it looks pretty good. Okay, so it's, as you can see, what happened is when I put the resin, final layer of resin, I got all those varying levels, they flattened out, but they're, they're still kind of visible. So it looks like there's a little bit of depth in the white, so there's some uh, dark tones coming through, and you can see a little bit of the edges of the white resin that I applied. So it just creates a little bit more um, depth and a bit more visual interest just with those little I guess you'd sort of they're like little contours little co contours in the in the ground okay so I think that that's worked out well so the when, when it, it's something that I always notice when I put um, resin over the top white it actually seems to to brighten lighten the tone it actually lightens the tone which is quite good because this was too dark so it actually has lightened it just slightly and particularly where I've hand painted it actually it actually really did lighten the tone quite a bit so they've turned out quite nice and it knocked back some of that really heavy heavy um, dark sort of ochre and um, burnt umber it's knocked it back a bit so yeah that's another landscape finished I hope you like it and thank you for watching